slightly uh, change the name of this um, presentation. So it would be two words in Kazimir Malevich and Eugene Trubetskoy. Uh, and uh, um, what I will be doing, I will be just uh, juxtaposing um, Malevich, Trubetskoy, and some other um, painters and, um, um, and theologians. Uh, so this would be my work. Uh, in his speculation in color, uh, Trubetskoy describes um, an icon as the togetherness of two words, two modes of existence. On one side, it is otherworldly eternal peace. On the other, suffering, chaotic, but striving toward the rapture in God existence, the world of men who intend to find God but have to find him, haven't find him yet. Uh, so it is the icon that unites two modes of being. Those words remind me of the later work of Kazimir Malevich, avant-garde artist and theorist. Uh, in uh, his uh, treatise, Suprematism, World as Objectlessness or Eternal Peace, which appeared after Mikhail Gershenson, philosopher and writer, encouraged him to write down all uh, his ideas. Um, he describes a man-made world and juxtaposes it uh, to the uh, objectless world of absolute divine peace. Uh, in this world work, uh, nature appeared to be infinite um, and unknowable. Mm, the process of uh, clearing, uh, uh, clearing of icons uh, in search of old images started in the beginning of 20th century. Uh, and uh, Trubetskoy, in speculation of color, describes his, his amusement before those icons, which avant-garde artists appreciate as well. Uh, so I will be juxtaposing uh, uh, icons and abstract art, and uh, we all know that uh, Black Square is called an um, icon of avant-garde. Uh, so I placed this picture from uh, uh, Tate Gallery, uh, probably last year, uh, because. Uh, mm, mm, Curators wanted to make uh, some similar uh, similar exhibition uh, to the exhibition that uh, Malevich uh, curated uh, earlier. Uh, so I will be juxtaposing uh, speculation of color and uh, cubism and futurism to suprematism of Malevich. Uh, and uh, we can know that they are similar in uh, years. Um, so I will start from clearing of icons. Um, in uh, the article, Two Words in Old Russian Icon Painting, uh, Trubetskoy writes that the discovery of the icon was one of the major events in the history of Russian culture. Trubetskoy draws our attention to the experience of his uh, contemporaries. He writes, we looked at the icon without seeing it. We knew it only as a dark blue in a rich golden setting. Then suddenly all the values were reversed. The setting was that covered most of the icon turned out to be a late invention, dating from the end of the 16th century and mainly a product of the spurious bad taste that went with the decline of the religious and aesthetic feeling. At bottom, imprisoning the icon in metal was unconscious iconoclasm, a denial of the painting itself, for it meant that its brushwork and colors were considered unimportant <coughs> from the aesthetic and especially the religious point of view. 
this is the beginning of the chapter of Trubetskoy's book when he is setting a problem of icon and uh, the meaning of its colors. The, this idea perfectly combined with the passion and colors of avant-garde paintings. So this is, this is a black square with a crackler. Uh, Malevich uh, was not the only avant-garde artist who turned to icons. Natalia Goncharova painted the Gospelers and Virgin and a Child. Vasily Kandinsky painted his All Saints, St. George and Last Judgment. Uh, one could include Filonov and many others. In general, avant-garde painters were absolutely amazed by the color and geometry of clear, all styled icons, which made a great impact in their art. As Alexander Rodchenko wrote in 1919, uh, Russian art has its origin in the icon. From another uh, side, artistic experiments of neo-primitivists, cubofuturists, and suprematists were considered in an association with icons, uh, but specific ones, old icons in the style of 15th, 16th centuries, or, or even earlier. Under Peter uh, the Great, those icons of old style were banned as they became associated with the icons of old believers sect. sect. Uh, Patriarch Nikon banned some Christian symbols at the church consuls and uh, old icons were destroyed and repainted in a new manner of Western style. Mm. And this process associated um, and uh, avant-garde artists uh, liked the old images and uh, they started to find them uh, in the beginning of 20th century, uh, there the process of cleaning icons uh, began. Uh, this process associated with the beginning of 20th century, uh, when Nicholas II signed uh, an act of religious freedom. Avant-garde uh, artists often judged as iconoclast in the popular and academic culture. In fact, Malevich and other avant-garde painters worked to save old icons in the 10th, 20th century, even as they used uh, aesthetic abstract versions of them in their own art. Uh, in 1920, avant-garde painter Larionov, Mikhail Larionov, write the following about icons in a short article explaining the inspiration uh, icons had for the avant-garde. Uh, there are two uh, artistic principles. The first, to copy nature on the basic of acquired knowledge and to use naturalistic forms in a various ways of the composition. The second, to study life in itself regardless of the manifestations of the surrounding world. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, after that, uh, he says that Russian icon painters were inspired by, uh, inspired by the second principle and were strongly drawn towards abstraction. Uh, so uh, Trubetskoy writes the words that could be found in Malevich as, as well in uh, Pavel Florensky. The Empyrean world of divine glory is not the only subject of old Russian icons. They also show us the uh, uh, continuity and interaction of two words, two places of being. On one hand, the eternal peace of the higher uh, regions. On the other, a world of sorrow, sins, cows, but thirsting for the God peace, a world that seeks but has not yet found God. Like those two words, so are the Russians uh, reflect, uh, reflected in the icon and counterposed each other. Uh, Trubetskoy continues, the second Russian, uh, Russia is primarily peasant Russia. The church uh, responds uh, to its prayer and hopes and uh, 
it has its special patrons among, among the saints. Everyone knows the close connection with architect, uh, agriculture of the saint of thunder, the prophet Elijah, uh, or of Saint George, those uh, very name in Greek refers to agriculture, or of the particular uh, uh, revered saint's uh, florin lover. This particularly reminds of Kazimir Malevich's meditations of his childhood. Then he speaks that he felt uh, the special connection between peasant art and icon. Uh, in his autobiography, Malevich describes his preferences among the art of previous centuries. It became clear that he distinguished Russian icons as well as other types from other paintings. In his words, uh, Chimabua uh, was congenial to him as he had a spirit which he felt in peasants. Later he adds, uh, we have fought, fought mostly against the Renaissance art and the art of classics, um, um, making this revolution of art, but we never fought against for folk art and against icon painters, against talented sign borders. Um, in 1922, Malevich finished writing his treatise, uh, Suprematism World as Objectlessness or Eternal Peace, uh, and where he describes um, the man main world and juxtapose it to the objectless uh, world of absolute divine peace. Uh, Malevich anthology includes God as the creator of the world, resting himself in peace. God pantheistically resides in all things, and he created everything, but at the same time he is transcendent. The great drama for man, as Malevich writes, is in returning to God. As the main characteristic of God is perfection, man is craving unity in God. Malevich sees man as the part of absolute thought of God. Malevich pathesized this movement of, uh, in avant-garde terms, uh, seeing it as a history of technical achievements beginning with the invention of wheels, then inventing wings of airplanes, and finally breaking the bounds of earth atmosphere. Mm, and uh, this reminds us actually of uh, Plato uh, and uh, the Platonic path to beauty when a man has to move upwards from sensible things to intelligible ideas. Uh, in Plato's symposium, Deotima speaks of young Socrates, uh, sorry, to young Socrates about something wonderfully beautiful in its nature. Uh, she says about this, first it always is and neither comes to be, nor passes away, neither waxes and wanes. It is not anywhere in another thing, as in an animal or in earth or in heaven. Uh, or in anything else, but itself, by itself, with, itse uh, with itself, uh, it is always one in form, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is a path uh, to know beauty as it is. And I juxtapose it uh, with the learning of uh, God. Criticizing all forms of practical realism, Malevich refuses to see visible reality as true. He sees the world as something not consisting of elements, nothing that can be broken, no dishes, no places, no chairs. Men possess all those things, and that's why they break, and uh, his life is a heap of crocs 
scrap. The scientific way of exploring reality is to analyze its parts and break things down to their, uh, their fragments. What should be done with all those countless fragments, Malevich is asking, and what does they mean? To investigate reality uh, at its truth means investigating that uh, does not exist and is incomprehensible. But for man, that is incomprehensible is non-existent. Hence, it is something non-existent that is being examined. And he continues, therefore, that we call reality is infinity without weight, measure, time, or space, absolute or relative, never trace in a form. It can be neither concerned nor, nor comprehended. There is nothing that can be comprehended, and at the same time, there exists this eternal nothing. Um, in, and uh, now I will turn to, again, to Trubetskoy, where he speaks about asceticism, uh, because it could be somehow uh, uh, connected with um, uh, those uh, abstract forms. In the paper, two, uh, two words of old Russian icon painting, Trubetskoy, as Florensky similarly in Iconostasis speaks of the meaning in respect of the icon. If we are not always able to see the meaning, this is because we have lost it. In old Russian icons, we find all those colors in their symbolic, otherworldly meaning. And in our icon painting, this divine gold has a special name, a cyst. Uh, it resembles rather an ethereal early cobweb of flying rays emitted by God and lightning every, uh, everything around. Then it appears in an icon, God is always suggested as its source. And uh, similarly in Florensky, in the lines of gold highlight assist, one sees the invisible realm somehow become comprehensible to us. And further, its primary energies become actualized into sensory images. Energy, those interactions, constitute the ontological skeleton of the thing. For, yes, then we can say that the assist lines are the lines of energy consisting, uh, sorry, constituting the force field that is the thing itself. Uh, he said it in, uh, uh, in um, Iconostasis. Um, and uh, we can uh, juxtapose um, two uh, sources, uh, Suprematism and Iconostasis uh, were published in the same year. Um, actually, uh, not supremacy, not this uh, source were published, but the smaller source got the not cast down of Malevich. Uh, and uh, the conclusion would be um, in, in conclusion, I would like to say that Malevich is often perceived as an underminer of art who substitutes abstract nothing for the traditional representative painting. Many of Malevich's contemporaries have been literally, literally shocked by exhibition of abstract art and named Malevich as the subverter of classical valuables. Uh, as Alexander Benoit said in the last Futurist exhibition, uh, 010, which uh, we've seen uh, here, I mean, it's uh, a, uh, not full copy, incomplete copy of that exhibition. Um, um, and Alexander said of the red corner of Russian homes, um, the, uh, where icons have 
um, their icons were often placed, that Malevich placed the black square there. Benoit saying, it is no longer Futurism that we have before us at present, but the new icon of the square. Everything holy we uh, and sacred we possessed, everything we loved and which uh, was uh, our reason for living has disappeared. Uh, and the central objective of this paper was to sub substanti substantiate naive Platonism of Kazimir Malevich in the co context of uh, uh, Russian philosophical theories. Uh, Malevich's name is associated with the radical change in art and even subversion of traditional values. Nevertheless, Malevich articulates ideas that reminds of transcendent platonic forms in his theoretical treatises. Concepts of objectlessness, nothing, and suprematism, which he uses to justify the, the necessity of rejecting representativeness and place it uh, at the center of Malevich's um, theory of art. Mm, accordingly, I propose to name him a revolutionary Platonist who postulated intelligible forms in 19th century, uh, the age of anthropology and imitation of reality, whereas Malevich's contemporaries interpreted his platonic ideas as revolutionary contradiction, uh, contradictory to the classical values. So um, maybe Malevich could have been answered to Benoit's words that if his revolution was the subversion of painterly realism, at the same time it seemed to be a return of metaphysical realism in the sense of Florensky. Malevich has rehabilitated classical, philosophical and theological arguments in the term of his time. Um, and did it uh, actually in the field of thoughts of Russian religious philosophy. 